you doing, man? Hello! I know you said this entire episode was going to be you doing an impression of Robin Williams doing an impression of a Scottish person. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm yet to... I'm yet to see exactly how much of this episode is going to be that. Oh, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. You, you Virginia Doubtfire, dear. I'm a hippo <laughs> granny who can beat bop, hip hop, dance to your drop. <laughs> I, I see. Um, I've, been, I've been practicing that all morning, Lewis. Um, I, I my... can tell. It's just so flawless. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's because my can, voice I can isn't... imagine Robin Williams' force ghost is, is hovering behind you. <laughs> Giving you a thumbs up. Patting me in the back. Well done. Yeah. Can I, 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 I've never actually watched those much Star Wars. Can the Force Ghosts interact with the real world? Because he well, might give could... you a pat on the back and then like smack you up the <laughs> up the ear hole. Because <laughs> he's like that impression. Thanks for doing it, but it was shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, they couldn't before uh, before the new ones, and then oh, yeah, okay. Force Ghosts can just do what uh, people do now so why why even bother be being alive if you can just affect the world the same way you know it's, yeah. uh, it's why a not? big contention I see uh, right have we got any bullshit for today Dan have you got a wheel to spin or perhaps a, a randomizer to randomize with or some nonsense like that I do I do oh here, fantastic here, here we go dear oh Louis Theroux. I like Louis Theroux. His documentaries yeah. are good, aren't they? Yeah, I I, I was like rewatching them, and I watched the uh, Louis Theroux's um, Weird Weekends, I, and right, and it's like so he spent like a, like a year with like, lots and lots of different people. He spent time in like a fundamentalist uh, Christian group. He spent time with uh, adult uh, adult film actors. He spent mm-hmm. time with. Um, so-called patriots that that live in the hills and are waiting for basically World War Three to happen, right. and then at the end of the season he had an episode called Weird Christmas, where he <laughs> invited um one of these fundamentalist Christians, uh, one of the porn actors, and uh, one of the the people that live in the hills to spend Christmas together, and it was it was so chaotic. <laughs> I, I can certainly imagine that would be chaotic. It's just absolute clashing of, of, of beliefs and ideologies. And somehow, by the end of it, it was like, you know, it was so heartwarming. But you, you just you, you just couldn't see from the beginning that these people were going to get on in any way. <laughs> but by the end of it, they were all sitting down, having a meal together, having a laugh, mm, you know. Mm. And it was really, I just, I found it really heartwarming. Well, that's that's nice, I suppose, yeah. It's yeah. um yeah I mean I quite like Louis through documentaries I think he um it's interesting his style of doc I mean this is like a very middle aged man opinion but it's <laughs> um, I like his style of his style of documentary making is not to just sort of uncover facts about what's going on it, it's sort of like a character based documentary style in a way yeah like um that's what got me when he went to when in the Westboro Baptist Church oh, ones, Jesus. which is some of my favorites is like um the interview we did with them. Um, what was, what was they called him? Pop or something, or or oh, Papa? Or... Fred Fred Phelps. Yeah, Fred Phelps, um, the the head of the church. Um, before he passed away, Louis Theroux did an interview with him, and it was like he just left quite a lot of silence for for the for Fred Phelps to try and fill, yeah. and it was just very obvious that he just wasn't used to being interviewed in this way. And it, I, I, I'm very I I I like that sort of very character based interviewing style. Yeah, like when he, when someone asks him a question and he sort of refused to answer it a bit, and it's like, well. You're being a dick, but there are, this person's response is kind of interesting. So yeah. I suppose that's that's the objective in a way. One of my favourite episodes is called um, "Head for the Hills," okay, and, and it's about the, the these patriots, as I was saying. And immediately like, off the bat, you're already sort of like, biased into oh my god, it's you know it's against the new world order and all that, and that's what what they're preparing for. But when when you start, sort of learn more about these people, it's like they believe in just every person on earth just coming up here and just they, we don't care who you are we don't care what you do the only oath or, or sort of code that you undertake is that you defend your neighbours and, and to the death essentially right and it's like yeah it's not a very practical way of of, 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 of living, living yeah. but it seems it seems sort of 
I can't really, I can't really describe it. I, I had a sort of respect by the end of it because it's like they're not, you know, there's just every sort of variation of people living up there, and they all coexist mm. under a sort of like moral sort of code. And it's like, I mean, I, I would never, I would never do that. I, I couldn't. I don't think I could do that. But it's just, it seemed so tranquil in a way. Yeah, despite yeah, it's, it's like a separate community from yeah. Yeah, it's like communal living and sort of you know mm. it's it's quite it's quite interesting. So it, it, I like the fact that Louis goes to these completely sort of madcap people that you think are just madcap, and then you you get to know them a bit more, and you sort of you, you know, realize they are a person that's it, you, yeah yeah exactly yeah. They've, they've 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 come to that conclusion for a reason. It's not just yeah oh they're crazy and that's it. And going yeah. back to that that the the Westboro Baptist Church one, he, he was. Um, I remember he, he spoke to um, a, a, another man who was a, a sort of a disciple of the church, and he'd gone there um, to the Westboro Baptist Church for the same reason Louis Theroux had many years prior, was yeah. to make a documentary film about the church. And he was, converted. and then he ended up, yeah. And then he was converted, and he he ended up staying and living with the church and bought his family out, sort of thing. Yeah, and it's like what <laughs> you hear that story and you think <laughs> yeah what that's insane how? but then yeah exactly how did that how how but then um you sort of talk to him and you see okay well as much as i disagree so strongly with his with his uh, views obviously i can see how he came to his opinions do you know what i mean it's like, yeah. like you say and i did I always um admire how Louis Theroux was always very open about his sort of his, his like allowing people to debate him in things that he clearly didn't believe in. Yeah, like, uh, like again, the Westboro Baptist Church one is very fresh in my mind for some bizarre reason. But um, the daughter, I think it was the eldest daughter of Fred Phelps. I've forgotten her name completely, but um, Shirley. Yes, I think it might have been Shirley. Yeah, Shirley. But um, she was out there like picketing with the rest of them and everything. But then when they got back to the sort of the family home, she was very happy to just debate louis theroux about these horrific opinions she had and yeah. it's like well i i admire the fact that both louis theroux and this this lady are, are willing to sort of sit down and, and speak about these these unspeakable things in a way yeah there was there was also there was also a bit because the louis theroux did two of them because the first one was like so popular because it was just like i think the west, the west ones yeah he's I done think, three has he done three yeah he went back a third time very oh recently my, yeah oh my god I mean, I think that um, I think the reason for that is because I think the the Westboro Baptist Church one for me personally was the hardest to sort of. Like, I could understand most of the other people's point of view in the other mm. episodes, but for me, I just it was really difficult to try and yeah, understand yeah. what what these people were saying. But mm. no, there was a there was a conversation they were having, and there was one of the members who was a photographer, and she'd taken. Um, a picture of of a little uh, Muslim boy, mm. and you would, it's uh, it was a lovely picture, and it was it was just very very well done, and the the boy looked very, you know, like cute and all that, and he just looked very innocent, and Louis was like, do you not see the, the contradiction there? I mean, he, and then it was like, oh no no, let me explain the context. We were there because we were burning Qurans, and I just That's wanted to get a picture. I was like, how can I, it's just. Mm. utterly mm. i can't i can't i can't understand that i can't yeah, get my yeah. head around that so it was the fact that he, i think maybe for him the reason he went back is because he couldn't understand it either yeah um, it, yeah I, I i couldn't agree more that's like you say because he does these character-based interviews you start to sort of understand yeah. the type of person they are and then they'll go and pick at something and they'll say like what's that that very famous clip from um again the louis through documentary where Fred Phelps was going, you're going to eat your babies. And oh you just sat there going, God, yeah. what? Sorry, what? That's zero to a hundred in no time at all. Citation what? needed. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but yeah, it absolutely blows my mind. And then you see, I think the most emotive part of it for me was um, when they were at a, a picket and they were picketing against, um, I think it was a soldier's funeral or something like that, oh, this Westboro Baptist Church was. Yeah. And... Um, Theroux and his team were there sort of filming them and there was a kid holding a sign that said God hates fags. Yeah. And he went up to the kid and said, do you know what, do you know what that means? He says, oh, uh, no, no, I don't. Well, can you, can you read it for me? No, I can't read. And it's yeah. like, it, that's just insane to me. It's, 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 it's insane to me that 
they can speak about the this what they believe to be unspeakable atrocities committed by the US government. Yeah. And then be indoctrinating children into these horrendous, awful beliefs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's not just like you know, you should believe in God. It's also a sort of yeah, you sh- you need to you need to um support all of God's righteous judgments, which means that anything yeah. bad that happens, God did that and you need to be thankful for that. It's like yeah, you're not gonna get me, and I suppose they don't want it I, because they said they, they kept saying stuff like, "Oh yeah, the 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 road to heaven is is narrow and few may find it." And so I don't think I think they just they want their close knit community, but they also want the attention that comes with saying these horrible things. Yeah, and our, like you say, the um you have to accept all of God's righteous judgments. It was it was that documentary maker bloke. I think Louis Drew said to him something like. Okay, so you brought your kids out with you. Say one of them, God forbid, say one of them got cancer. You would be fine with that. And you'd be like, yeah, that's fine. If that's what God chooses to happen, that's what God chooses to happen. How unspeakably insane. Do you know what I mean? I know I'm making such rash judgments about these people, but I like to think most parents don't want their children to get cancer. No, or or, or at least are not happy when it does occur. Um, And it's funny because, look, I'm sure sure you know that a lot of the members had left. A lot of the younger, yeah, yeah. A lot of the younger people that were coming up had had left, and Louis Theroux interviewed them and tried to like, question them on it. And you could see so clearly that these people were in such agonizing pain over the mm. loss of their over over the loss of their children. And Louis was, like, I've never seen so so many people try and deny the fact that they're so upset. It's really quite like, hard to be. To be so dedicated to your belief that you don't even allow yourself to grieve mm, mm. over the loss of a family member, and it's not—it's mm. not death threat. Right? They just have been cut off completely from the yeah, from the uh, church. It's really quite sad. Yeah, like that had happened to the the pastor Fred Phelps, and uh, Louis Threw said to him, um, "How many kids have you got?" Because I think he—I think it was something like he had seven, and four were still with the church, and the rest had, had, had left the church. Yeah, and Fred Phelps just didn't respond. He just sort of stood up and walked <sighs> off. Jeez, and which it, it's just insane to to even consider. It is. It's now, is the reason you've chosen such a bizarre, <laughs> vaguely dark, um, ten minute bullshit because we have a very light hearted film? Well, no, I just because I was I was just watching it throughout the week, mm. and I just I found the the weird Christmas one specifically quite quite sort of heartwarming, and I was just like, <laughs> I just like you know this. Fundamental. I mean, as fundamentalist as you could go, sort of a uh, radical Christian, having you know conversations and dinner with this porn actor. It's like that is yeah, just. It's, that it's is kind just, of insane. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. It's madcap, and it's it's just beautiful. You know, mm, mm. just putting aside your your differences and sharing a meal. That's. It's not going to solve all the world's problems, but it's like it's just. The it's fact a step that in the right beings, direction. Yeah, it's yeah. the fact that human beings can do that is just amazing. Yeah. But yeah, so... No, I know exactly what you mean. Anyway, Dan, what film are we talking about today? We are talking about Mrs. Doubtfire, dear. Uh, it was written by Randy Mayne Singer, Leslie Dixon, uh, and the story was by... I'm not going to do that. Uh, and it was, The story was by Anne Fine. <laughs> And it was directed by Chris Columbus, and it's starring Robin Williams, Sally Field, Mara Wilson, Lisa Jacob, uh, Matthew Lawrence, and Piers Brosnan. Indeed. Who, by the way, is absolutely unrecognisable in this film. He, his face has changed so much between this film and the modern day. Yeah. Like, just, I mean, just because he's gotten older, obviously, but he just looks so incredibly different. It well, sort of blew my mind a bit. That's actually my first question, but we'll get to that. Um, oh right, okay. <laughs> have you uh, got do you have an statement open... then? I Ooh. do. Ooh. 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 Oh, jeez! Oh, jump the gun there. Um, a heartwarming story about two people falling out of love with each other and how the kids deal with it being caught up in the crossfire. Robin Williams and Sally Field are really fantastic in this film. Mm. Uh, a heartwarming tale about love and devotion. Much as it doesn't have, much as it has parts that have aged particularly badly, it's my first yes. time watching and I did love it. Definitely. Um, right, my first question. Um, is Piers Brosnan uh, as good looking here as he is in that Eurovision film? No, 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 <laughs> not at all. 
in the Eurovision <laughs> film, he is absolutely gorgeous. In this, <laughs> he, he just looks like a, a fairly standard, handsome man. Look, look, Nettie, that's called liposuction. <laughs> <laughs> That's that bit where um, Mrs. Doubtfire is waving down at him as he gets out of his car. Yeah, and then sticks. he turns away and she just sticks, his, just sticks her finger up at him. <laughs> My favourite bit is that when he's like, oh, come on, Mrs. Doubtfire, come and join us. And he, he tries to touch. He's like, oh, touch me again. I'll drown you, you bastard. <laughs> I'll just stand here and watch you moving in my family. <laughs> yeah, it's... um. <laughs> right, one thing I, I, I really did take away from this film is Robin Williams is or i suppose was so incredibly talented yes he both he, from he the, the 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 variety of voices to the, the to hilariousness of his performance to even the singing right at the start is as the bird yeah he, he is so talented in physical comedy and non-physical comedy and even just standard acting yeah. Like those films where Robin Williams puts on a turtleneck and grows a beard and then he's emotional for the film like yeah. goodwill hunting He's really, yep, really definitely. good in that. Do you know what I mean? He so is. He's so. Mm. I think. I think he's quite. Um, everyone just knows him as the the impressions are funny man, but he's so underrated as a, oh, as God, an actor. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I I have to say, in terms of hilarity, there was. Um, I think I can do a great impression of a hot dog. Is the funniest line <laughs> I have ever seen <laughs> in a film. <laughs> Because he's just doing these these impressions, and I, I didn't get them because presumably they're time the references for nineteen ninety three when the film came out. But I yeah. I wasn't alive then; I didn't get them. And then it's just a, a break for a second. I can do a great impression of a hot dog, and it just like lies flat in the chair, and it, I was crying laughing. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It was hilarious. I know I know some of the impressions. Um, I like the one we've come to this planet looking for intelligent life. Oops, we've made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that's from, but yeah, I, I, it's not. I don't, I don't know if it's from anything. I think he's just doing a sort of alien sort of voice. Mm, um, mm. Well, I do voices. Um, uh, I, it's um, I, I, the, I understand that the argument is the underpinning for the conflict in the film, but it was very zero to a hundred very quickly. You know when yeah. you have a pan on the on the hob and there's like oil in it that's that's heating up for you to put uh, I don't know whatever it is you're at fry, and then you put there's like you're stirring something stirring some pasta and a couple of splashes of water get into the oil and it just goes Poosh, and, and yeah. then it's like an enormous thing. It was like that and I was like oh my god this is really sudden and out of nowhere. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, I, su- um, I suppose this it, it all sort of happened off screen and we just have to sort yeah of yeah it's like becoming our- embittered with time sort of thing. Yeah, um, I think that I wanted to see look, look more of that, because mm, like, mm. it's it's pretty. You know, it's the, the it's the reason that the film sort of is that this mm. divorce happens and they have to deal with it, and some some deal with it much better than others. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, you know, as as funny as it is and as heartwarming as as it is, can we just talk about um, Daniel's methodical sort of really kind of fucked up way of trying to solve this problem you yes. know d- d- dressing b- creating a character dressing up as an old woman and having private conversations with his ex-wife about like intimate things and it's just it seems very sort of quite horrible when, I, when i'm thinking yeah, about it i was really? watching this thinking there's something illegal about this but i don't know <laughs> what it is i'm not I'm not entirely sure what is illegal, but there's something feels illegal about this. Yeah. I like the fact that they don't, like, I think on first viewing, you're probably more likely to side with Daniel because he's the, mm. the protagonist, but both both of them have their have their issues. Like yeah, Daniel yeah. can't Daniel can't take anything seriously and, you know, he doesn't want to, like, talk about the issues and maybe that's the reason he rather than you know cleaning up his apartment and learning how to cook anyway on his own he has to create this character in order to mm, mm. bring that out in him which is you know maybe something that he needs to deal with um yeah Miranda's... It's even in, in his in the conclusion to that that enormous water in a pot of oil argument um at the end he's joking and saying we'll go on holiday and when we come back the problems would still be here then we'll move 
like he's he's just he's kind of joking in yeah. the midst of an argument. It's like what Daniel it's needs so is not unhelpful. like yeah. I mean, maybe he doesn't need therapy as such because he does sort of. I'm not going to say he therapizes him. Therap? That's not a fucking word. He, <laughs> I'm not going to say he he helps himself, but like in creating this character and in sort of teaching himself to cook and clean and all that, he does become a better father by being somebody else in a strange way. And I, yeah. okay, I get it, but surely a much more healthy way to do this would be to go to a therapist than to yeah. than to make your brother make a, a load of masks and, and costumes for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can I just say, I love how supportive the brother is when he says, can I, bec- I want to become a woman. That's... That's oh, I'm so su- happy! Yeah, that's that's the support we need in our lives, mm. folks. Just instant. Oh, that's fantastic! I'm so happy for it. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Mm. For a 1990s film, that was a ray of sunshine and a plethora of outdated references and stuff. I oh, was God, just like, yeah. oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, because there were a lot of things about like transgender and and stuff, transgender yeah. issues and stuff that have aged very poorly in this film. I, but I that so. that sort of oh can, oh I'm so happy that 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 bit has aged very well, yeah. Because it it stands out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of it. Definitely, definitely. It re- it really sort of just because I I was as I was watching it again, I remembered like some of the 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 really uh, impure taste sort of jokes yeah, and, and yeah. messages that it was, and then to get that out of the blue, it was like oh that was oh that's nice. I like that. That was lovely. Mm. Mm. Um. Miranda, what did you think about Miranda as a character? I am terrible with character names. That was Sally Field, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I think I can understand her frustration, but I think perhaps she doesn't deal with it very well. But then I also think that's kind of the plot of the film in a weird yeah. way. Is like none of them really deal with their their issues very well. Like Miranda no. deals with her issues by sort of taking it out on her husband and spending too much time at work and not spending time with the kids. And do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, again, it, if everybody just sat down and talked about it, we could, this film would be over <laughs> in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I, 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 as much as I understand Miranda's motivations, I'm not sure if I agree with the way she handled it. I think the way to deal with your husband, as, oh, I don't, I'm not sure how to phrase it, but do you know, just see what I mean. Yeah, I, I think, um. I, I, I like that they don't that they could have they they could have made the mistake of making Miranda the villain. Yes, and, and I'm glad they didn't. No, I'm I'm glad they didn't as well because that's it's a very easy trap to fall into. I think with these kind of it's like, yeah, maybe she's quite harsh and quite stern, but it's like we have to assume that the the fourteen years prior, Daniel is always like this, just contradicting every every rule. Yeah. She sets and just, you know, sort of makes jokes and arguments and doesn't take it. And so it's like, you can't, you know, that's not a sustainable sort of relationship because you, you can't get no, anything yeah. said or, or done. So I suppose that makes a lot of sense. No, but it, it's, it's not it's, yeah. it's not one-sided. Both have their problems and it's mm. this character that is created makes them both look better people actually mm, and i do like that we had that sort of pixar style happy ending of like the happy ending isn't what you'd thought it would be but it's still a happy ending yeah like um and... the best example is up like um oh fuck i've forgotten his name as well um the old man you know uh, oh oh what's his name mark it's not mark gerald it's ellie no. ellie is the oh fucking i'm just gonna google it jesus christ yeah, El- oh, that's the El- wrong. Ellie is the is his wife. Yeah. Russ- Russell is the scout. Yeah. And up, his name up. is Carl. Carl, yes, that's right. That's what it is, Carl Fredericks. Yeah, but yeah, Carl doesn't actually go and live on the top of that cliff, but it's still kind of a happy ending. He's kind of got a new lease on life thanks to his adventure, yeah. and the house is 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 where he wanted it to be. And do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because so many like nineties films, like liar liar. It's like that that goes through like a sort of breakup, and then mm. Jim Carrey ends up back together at the end of it. It's like that, I, that, that's not real life. People, no, no, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, pe- people make decisions for reasons, and they don't just sort of go back in them arbitrarily. So mm. to have this sort of 
this sort of separation as individuals, but still a sort of coexistence. Mm, it's very mm. sort of like, that speech at the end. God, holy yeah. God. The cried, yeah. Just because they don't love each other anymore doesn't mean that they don't love you. Oh my God! Stop yeah, think, it, Robin. <laughs> I know, I know. It's the um, it, it it sort of deals with that very toxic mindset in a way of like um, stay together for the kids, which is just yeah. it's such a poor idea to have. Because if if I mean I'm not a parent at this point in my life, but it, I think if you were to if, if if you had these two parents in a house that were constantly fighting and arguing, that's not a good environment for a kid. Do you know what I mean? No, I agree. And that's the point that Mrs. Doubtfire sort of gets across in that final speech is... they. I think she actually says it with words. It's just uh, the fact that they are happier will mean that they are nicer to be around for you. And the fact yeah. that they are happier will make their lives better and that will make your life better. Yeah, Every, some... There's lots of love and just because it's not between the two parents doesn't mean it's not there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like um, uh, when they're separated, they become much better people and much better mummies and daddies for you, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's really it's it's true. Um, oh, fucking hell! That speech, Jesus Christ, got me, got me, got me in the feels, man. <laughs> I know it's um, I, I would, I would like to say that for a, a genuine period of the film, I know we've just had a very serious conversation about the emotion about emotional aspect of this film but for a part of this film i did genuinely think that mrs doubtfire might accidentally murder piers brosnan I, yeah i thought that's the route they were going. that was where they were going she's gonna like trip and throw a knife in his face or something i was like oh my god what the fuck what the fuck but no <laughs> it takes a dark turn um, yeah. i mean let's let's not forget that he did poison him yes I, oh no I'm, I'm allergic to pepper if he'd have said, oh, I don't like pepper, okay, fine. But if he said, oh, I'm allergic to pepper, then he just chucks a load of cayenne pepper on the meat. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm not too sure about that. But <laughs> um, I suppose you have to have that sort of humour in there. You know, it's, mm, it's a mm. hard one, but it's still a 90s sort of comedy film. You know, so mm. you, they're going to have like 90s jokes for 90s people i guess and nearly yeah, killing yeah. a man is one of them um yeah. i have um, i w- right is there anything better than very very good well executed physical comedy no like, it's what got me is the bit in the restaurant where um her uh, mrs doubtfire's teeth fall into the is it a wine glass she's drinking from and yes. um then they're trying to get it out it's robin williams's dialogue of like no, no, dearie, make a pincer. And it's just, just like, <laughs> it just makes me smile and it's so ridiculous. But I just, really good, well-executed physical comedy is so brilliant. It, it really is. It's, that and is... that sort of, yeah, and the, the, the what's it called? The, um, the, uh, the bit at the end where it's like a tracking shot with, uh, with the camera backs across the restaurant and Robin Williams leaps over that service counter or whatever it was. And it's like, it's just such good physical action and such good physical comedy. It's really good. And he's just... <laughs> She's just screaming, Help us on the radio! <laughs> and, and, and yet, shouting so loud, like he still manages to keep the sort of old woman Scottish voice, which is just like... <laughs> so amazing. skilled, isn't he? Yeah. I, I like the fact that even, like, he, he's on like, fire. Um, mm. that he's, this Hollandaise smells like burning rubber. <laughs> he's so in character that he screams as Mrs. Doubtfire. He's like, yeah. Oh! Yeah. oh! Yeah, like I say, it's brilliantly done physical comedy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it is. Oh, um, oh, by man. the way, the mum's house. How fucking fancy is that house? Yeah. Was Like, she's... she. What is she, an architect? Was that, that that was the vibe I was getting, was that she was an architect. Yeah. And then... And Robin Williams is a, is a sort of out-of-work uh, voice actor. Who yeah. Who seems to constantly be quitting things for, for no apparent yeah, reason. Is... Yeah. And, was... the, and, like, somehow they can afford this incredibly beautiful house. She must be. She must be rolling in it. Must oh have yeah, hundred percent. A lot of money. Um, <clears throat> which is which is great. Uh, um, I well, I do want to say quickly about the cameras in this. Um, this film is like a masterclass in simple, straightforward cinematography. Yeah. Of like even like the, it has great use throughout of extreme close-ups. Mm-hmm. Like the one I particularly liked was um, the when the when the new terrible nanny. Uh, is being interviewed. She says, "I don't do, 
um, I don't cook, I don't clean, I don't... And she has, like, a long list of things she doesn't do. Yeah. And it's, like, this extreme close-up where it's essentially just, like, her eyes. And you can just see her being so so harsh about it. And it's, like, it's just really good stuff like yes. that. I, I, in, a, in a film where the DOP doesn't care, you, you, know, you don't notice... But if in a film where they do care, you really do notice, and that that's yeah. what I got from this. It's very threatening to have like someone's face up against, it. so it's like <clears throat> you're already sort of against her before, which is the point of the the scene. Mm. Um, mm. No, I I agree. I think the the cinematography is very good. It's it's you're right. That's what it is. It's simple. It's not overcomplicated. Yeah. It's just very sort of down down the middle, crisp and clean, and it gets. Mm. Its, gets his point across. Um, I'll tell you what other movie is, is, is like a really good example of sort of simple cinematography. Bizarrely, it's the first Thor movie. Really? Throughout, I, it I has... I'd need to rewatch like it. lots of little... Lot, like lots of visual motifs that are just very simple and straightforward, but they work very well. Like there is a lot of Dutch tilt in that film. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's the right word for that. But like shots of the throne when Odin or Loki or whoever sat on it and the camera's just tilted a bit and lots of little tiny things that just work really well yeah it's just really nice i will say um a criticism i have uh, mm. she's not english <laughs> right okay let's just get that let's make that clear america okay mrs doubtfire is not english <laughs> you could say she's british i'd, I'd mm. accept that but she is scottish okay okay you, you, dear. are you furious about this i was fu- Oh, she makes a good cup of English tea. No, 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 no. She's not from England. She's from Scotland. Okay, maybe she moved to England, but that accent is Scottish. Sco- right? I just need to get but that. I'd say that the English English tea thing. That's in reference to the tea rather than the rather than the the, the person making it. I know, but the, the 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 immediate sentence before she makes a good cup of English tea was, "Your sister is English." So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was, I'll let you have that one. Yeah. So I was a bit, I was a bit miffed at that. Um. Um. I tell you what, 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 what sort of threw me for a loop is right at the end. There's that sort of second hearing in the court, and it all comes out. Everything that Robin Williams has done, dressing up as Mrs. Doubtfire, and all this, and then pretty much straight afterwards, it, it, it is Robin Williams walking into the house as though nothing is actually the judge's ruling doesn't really matter. Yeah. And the mum goes, oh, no, I sorted it out. I took care of it. What? How does that, yeah, <laughs> you, how does you that work? You just overturned the judge's ruling like that. It's just very strange. Yeah. Um, I mean, the judge has, the judge has a point. Uh, what I see is the workings of a very di- <laughs> a very uh, disturbed man. I mean, from, from an outside perspective, um, yeah. <laughs> you, mm, you pretended mm. to be another person and like, basically was in your ex's house every single night look at i know that you, you know they're they're his children as well but it's like it's very sort of it's a very sly sort of really creepy way to go about <laughs> go about doing things yeah it, it, it is a creepy way to to do things you're right um but yeah but if he didn't we wouldn't have a film so <laughs> well so i guess it was necessary i suppose you're right <laughs> um <laughs> I tell you what really made me laugh. It probably shouldn't, but the um oh he was killed by the, it was the drink that killed him in the end. Oh was he an alcoholic? I'm so sorry. No, it was a Guinness truck that killed him. <laughs> oh my god, that was. <sighs> I don't I don't really like like Mrs Brown's boys. Um, yeah, yeah. There was there was that one line where it was like you know I remember your father's last words. Oh fuck, it's a bus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just you know completely hits you for a for a for a shock yeah there. Um, it's classic expectation subversion exactly that's exactly what it is there is some really funny there's some really funny stuff in this film see the mm. phone calls when he's applying for the for the job yeah when he, when he shouts look Layla get back in your cell don't make me get the hose and then goes to the sweet old woman voice <laughs> it's like Layla get back in your cell don't make me get the hose hello <laughs> uh, yeah i know exactly what you mean um i've got a bit of a question go on when mrs doubtfire gets onto the bus and her and pierce brosnan not pierce brosnan the bus driver are having like a chat 
Yeah. Does that not annoy the lev- the life out of all of the other passengers on the bus? Yes. Yeah, so c- come on. If me. you were sat on a bus, somebody got on, and then the bus driver turned around and had like a five ten minute chat with them, would you not be like, can we? Can we go? Yeah. What's going on? So you're having a nice convo. I'm really late for fucking work, pal. Come on. Yeah. Do you know what I will say? The bus driver and the brother are the most like, tolerant people in this film. Mm-hmm. Because he was... The bus driver was just like, just the way God made you. Natural. You're, you're a very special lady. That's like... I mean, don't get me wrong. Since she was a stranger, it was extremely creepy and weird. Yeah, very creepy. Very creepy. But it's like... I suppose that says something a lot about the, the, the film. The most tolerant people are obviously his brother, which is great, but a creepy bus driver who Yeah. Who's just sort of holding up the entire line. It's like maybe he could he could do some do something better with that. Writers maybe. Get get yeah, some maybe, maybe get yeah. some nicer tolerant people rather than a <laughs> creepy yeah. bus driver. Um but yeah. God. It's... I I loved the I, right I loved the animals bit at the start when he, when he gets all the animals into the house and he's like oh look <laughs> at all these animals that we've got it's like I'm, you know, don't get me wrong I know it's terrible and bizarre but I just love animals yeah I like animals careful Miranda that that pony's had a lot of water she's <laughs> <laughs> to, to unplug okay. plus there was a cow I love a good cow there was a cow and it's what why why did he do that. Like, just because the because the child was like liked animals, I suppose. It's a party, yeah, and it's for your birth. But like a cow, <laughs> Re- really, really. What do you what do you want for your birthday, pal? I want a cow. What? what, what? <laughs> 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 I mean, like I've 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 seen a few cows in my time, and uh, mm. they're pretty. They don't really care where they <laughs> shit. They will shit yeah, anywhere. Yeah. They'll you know they'll probably just eat everything in, in sight. <laughs> you know, they're not very house-friendly. No, not as, not especially, and yet there is one in the living room. Do you think Daniel just did it because he knew that he was just going to get into heaps of trouble over it? Maybe subconsciously he is, wanted the Are you trying to get well? a rise out of me? Maybe, yeah. I, I, I hadn't even considered it, but maybe. Yeah, because he can't, he can't admit that what he wants. Maybe that, yeah, mm. maybe that fits with the reason that he became Mrs. Doubtfire. He can't to come to terms and just face things as they are. He has to do some sort of weird, sly acting job in order to, you know, make sense of it in his own head. Which is, I mean, it's it's quite good. It's quite good character development for a 1993 film. But maybe I'm just being too generous <laughs> with it. They probably just went right. Okay, what we're going to do for this scene? Let's have a, uh, a cow. A horse, and uh, oh, imagine he dressed up as a as a woman and pretended to be one for the entire. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, let's do that. So I'd, maybe I'm being too generous, or maybe I'm not. I don't know. I, I have no idea, but I, it's it does seem. Um, I mean, it speaks to Daniel's character, I suppose, in that like, um, he's a very reckless person. Yeah, he, he quits from a job that he apparently very much needs, and then hires a load of animals to trash his house and then doesn't really bother cleaning it up. Yeah, that... It speaks to Daniel's character very much. Yeah, and then, and, and then he's like, oh, lighten up and all that. It's like, what? what? <laughs> so you've, you've just, you've lost your, you've quit your job and now you're spending your money on nonsense and it's just left to Miranda to clean everything up. It's like, yeah, I I can I now that I'm thinking about it more and more, I can completely understand why Miranda was like, "Yeah, fuck this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. Our thing is, arguments don't arguments don't work unless you're like actually communicating. Yeah. If you're just shouting at each other, then it's not an argument. It's just it's just shouting. Do you know what I mean? If, if if they had this argument and then he said, right, okay, I mean, yeah, sorry, okay, you're right. I'll never do anything like this ever again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I see that this is reckless. When we do something like this, I'll have him in the back garden or I'll... Do, do you know what I mean? It's not an argument. It's just shouting. Yeah, exactly. You know? Um, I I will say, and I'll, another criticism I have, um, how, how do they not know it's him? What do you... Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I suppose that's a good point. How many voices does Daniel have in his roster? Has he never done a voice like that in the fourteen <laughs> years that he's been? Ma- I'm sure he has. He must. You'd have. imagine he has. Yeah. 
I mean, he sort of did the hello like after the Layla line, so it's like, did she not go? I thought I, I thought I was just on the phone to you a minute ago when you were shouting at your daughter to get back in her cell, but but I mean, can't she see his face? Like, I suppose it's the prosthetics and the teeth and the. Yeah, I suppose it, because it's something you wouldn't expect and you don't want it to happen. You have to sort of say yeah. maybe there's some suspension of disbelief. It's the same height and everything, and like you know, <laughs> so he seems to be exactly the same dimensions as my my ex husband. Yeah, it's just, and there are bits where like his voice sort of goes deep, and it's like, yeah, that's clearly just my ex husband doing a Scottish accent. <laughs> Oh, sorry, in English. No, it's Scottish Miranda, right? Calm the fuck down. Um, just get some of my gonads, Lewis. I, mean, I see. Well, we we certainly don't want that. Um, <laughs> I feel like I might actually enjoy the packing and shipping job. I know that I sounds stupid. I, I think, I think yeah, I probably would quite enjoy the, 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 the simplicity of the... I suppose the monotony would eventually just destroy my soul. But I think for a while, at least, I would enjoy the simplicity of it. Yeah. Do, do you know, they make a really good point at the beginning of the film with the cartoon. Because I remember like, watching cartoons when I was younger, like Tom and Jerry and stuff like that. And, mm. and then like, I, sort of, like, I sort of searched it up because I wanted a bit of nostalgia. They are so like that. So, like, there's, they? they smoke like, all the time in it. And there's like just really... You just wouldn't let a child watch that kind of stuff, and it's just, it's a really good point for like nineties like sort of cartoons. It's mm, like mm. it's it's pretty it's pretty out there and quite a quite a responsible. It's quite, maybe the voice of God that'd be even better. Right, we will pack you down. That's so. I can imagine a cartoon doing that, like just in the middle of like the the big sort of chase scene or something like that with tom and jerry the voice yeah. of god <laughs> just breaks in morgan jerry. freeman shows up <laughs> and just says do not smoke that's that's Ugh. that's my morgan freeman impression folks i hope you enjoyed I it i see it was flawless flawless sorry D- danny is morgan freeman in your house right now yep yeah wow i i believe that he's right here and that would be the perfect setup to do an impression but because it's not very good i'm not gonna <laughs> do that <laughs> Um, I'm, good, I'm good, good at Scottish good people. <laughs> You're good at Scottish people. Oh well, you won't be able to do Mrs. Doubtfire then. She's English. You fucker. <laughs> um, one thing I do want to quickly say: we should do Goodwill Hunting sometime. Yes, Robin Williams is really good in that, and he's really good in this. Also, I've never seen what's that one he did? The poem something or other? <laughs> um, poem. The um. Dead Poet Society. Oh, I, yeah, I have yeah, not yeah. seen that, and he's meant to be really good in it, so I want to see it. He's very good in Patch Adams as well. Um, I am unaware a, of Patch Adams. It's an amazing film. It's about um, uh, a, a, a doctor who mm-hmm. sort of break he let, he breaks the rules and let, he sort of makes. Oh, it's hard to it's hard to explain because it just sounds like weird saying it. It's like yeah, he he breaks all the medical rules to let. Mm allow like kids to laugh and stuff like that it's like forming forming relationships with like patients mm. on like, a human level that's the whole sort of thing about the film the and true the... story of a heroic man hunter patch adams determined to become a medical medical doctor because he enjoys helping people he ventured where no doctor had ventured before using humor and pathos yeah there you go there we go that's that sounds a bit better <laughs> than my botched synopsis <laughs> No, I think your botched synopsis was fantastic, Danny. Why don't you get a uh, career he, writing botched synopses? He goes about making people laugh and that, and he wants to uh, become a doctor and that. But he breaks all the rules and that. And he, oh, he's got a, he's got a clown nose on him. One of the scenes, ah, it's good. He's got a watch. <laughs> For some bizarre reason, that gave me that that the the bit that snapped me to that uh, Family Guy cutaway where it was uh, movies in a bath with Lou. <laughs> Hey everybody, tonight we're watching Gremlins. Now you can't get these furry little things wet, but don't worry, because what's happening in here is not affecting what's happening on the movie. <laughs> I, just, I just got to imagine you now, sat in a bath, just being like, Hello everyone, um, now don't worry, we're going to do Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello, dearies. <laughs> Hello, this is, isn't my impression good? Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm good, you fuckers. <laughs> 
you've got like a ticker underneath the camera that's just scrolling around. People are tweeting you while the show's ongoing. I've got an oh, Hiram, what the fuck is this? I've got an applause sign. <laughs> Clap, you bitches! Oh god, I like to imagine it's 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 like normal. It's dry. You reach down the side of the bar where it's dry. You pick it up and hold the applause sign. There's no studio audience, so you say, "Ah, thank you for clapping at home. Thank you for that." <laughs> then you drop it in the bath, and then routinely through the rest of the show, you make a joke, pick up the applause sign, and hold it, and it just becomes more and more <laughs> faded as it goes in and out of the bath. It disintegrates. It's like, please clap. I just look like a sad. I just look like a sad clown at this oh, point. God, please clap yeah. for me. Please. The end of the the end of this show. You're just holding up a piece of plywood. This is my last <laughs> chance. <laughs> and as always, the applause sign, and it's just this damp piece of wood <laughs> with nothing on it anymore. <laughs> oh god, yeah, perfect. Uh, how do we Netflix? If you're listening, I know. Can we green light that show, please? Yeah, they they, they most certainly will. You know they will. It's a, as Rick and Morty says, yeah, five of my friends have got Netflix deals. It's a very achievable goal. <laughs> I um, I I know not what to make of that. Is it, is it harder to get an harder to get an Amazon Prime deal? I think is that what we should be shooting for? I think the joke is is that Netflix like have made some good shows, but they've also made like really bad ones, and they just seem to like always make new net Netflix originals without really. Like making yeah, them actually, good. that's a really good point. Some of them are just you don't. I don't even watch most of them because I just can't be bothered. You know, yeah. it's just the Netflix originals are, are are great. A lot of them are great, but also a lot of them are kind of crap. Yeah, but like like you have great ones like uh, Umbrella Academy or Stranger Things. Yeah, but then you have really crap ones. Like quite often, Netflix will release a documentary or something, and you'll think. What the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell did I just spend an hour of my life watching? That was ridiculous. They are so obsessed with murderers at the moment, aren't they? Netflix. Mm. It's just mm. so many mm. murderer documentaries. It's like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> Brilliant. I don't mind true crime documentary and stuff, but I, I, I need a bit of a break from true crime it's, every now and then. It's become, I, I, it's become such a fad. Like it's, it's like everywhere now. That's all people mm. want to see. Like even so that the um, it's always sunny. Like took the piss out of it. And like they did a documentary about one of their characters, Dennis, who like very, very obviously killed his wife mm. because he didn't want to pay alimony payments anymore. Oh my god! And it's like, oh, it's so I can't, I can't go it. But it's like they, <laughs> they just all the gang just openly say, yeah, yeah, he killed her. He could, yeah, you pushed her off a roof, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. Stop! You guys are nuts. <laughs> and it's they don't even they try they don't even try and make any ambiguity about it anymore. It's like the the murder sort of subculture is just so palpable nowadays. People mm, are are, it's, are it's obsessed kind of with it. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, it's like making a murder and all that. Making a what? What are you gonna call a, the, the the next documentary? Making another murderer. <laughs> making, making yet, yet more murderers. <laughs> making more murderers. <laughs> Making this murderer, don't worry, it's the last one we're contractually obliged to make. We signed on to make four murderers. I've never watched Making a Murderer. Is it like a story about the childhood of Ted Bundy or whatever? I've never seen it either. Oh, well, because for some reason I get the image in my head of like, hello and welcome to... It's like a, somebody, it's a documentary filmmaker or something. He's crouching down outside of... like next to a bush. It's like, hi, we're outside of um, <laughs> um, Jen... Smith's house, and 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 she's a child, and we're going to go in and scare the shit out of her, then run out again. They're going to do that every night for a fortnight, and then she's going to start killing animals, and then <laughs> as she grows up, she'll become a serial killer. How great's that? That would. And then he be... holds up a soggy applause sign. <laughs> that would be like, it's, it's so it's like rather than a, a sort of backstory of of how murderers sort of become murderers <laughs> through horrible... It's just a film crew that go about <laughs> trying tormenting to make people, people trying murderers. to m- make people snap into... <laughs> <laughs> you want more murderers? Well, we've made them. That's the next <laughs> That's the next one. <laughs> oh, God, that's... that's oh, I, that's, that's insane. I imagine... I, yeah, don't is, murder I know, people, I know, folks. Yeah, try... I, I can't believe I have to say this, but do not murder. Yeah. <laughs> avoid murdering. Yes, avoid murdering. Oh, do you know what? That could be a good... That could be episode 50. Avoid murdering. 
avoid murdering. We just spend a void murdering Aye. people. Yes, yeah, we'll I like that da, very da, much. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Avoid. Dance with the tree, honey. Da, 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 Episode That's my fifty. Bit from the Lorax. Avoid murdering our careers. <laughs> What? No, sorry, I think my acting skills done that. <laughs> I'm only joking. What careers? <laughs> um, self-deprecation. You can't beat it, can you? Um, I'm running. I'm fastly running out of notes for this film. Oh Christ, me too. Um, that's why we're no, talking about make, That's why we're talking about making a murderer and all that. <laughs> so that image now of just like a film crew going out and just picking a random member of the public, trying to make them snap. Okay, uh, like, we're here. Uh, th- we're here at Mark's house in uh, Derby, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try and uh, make him a murderer. So, <laughs> hello and welcome to Making a Murderer, the only show where the host is expendable. <laughs> the, the entire object of the show is to make the 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 con- I say contestant. It would be an unwilling contestant. Um, until they snap and murder the host. <laughs> hello. Bloody hell. Hello, welcome to Making a Murderer, hosted by me, Gemma Collins. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it has to be someone funny. It has to be like Rylan or someone like that. Oh, yeah. Because if Rylan came to my house every night and annoyed me, I probably would like, commit a murder at some point. <laughs> and it, it, do, you know, right. do you know what would be really funny? They, they, The crew would like, expect them not to be in the crossfire of it. Yes, yes. They would sort of maybe stand all wearing back. Like, um, they would stand to the side with a camera on them, and just in the background, look, someone's getting killed, and it's like, oh, guess we've made another murderer. <laughs> God. They're sort of... I like to imagine all the rest of the crew and, and Rylan and, and whoever's hosting, they're all wearing like full SWAT gear. <laughs> just like it's like they've had to cut a little hole in the eyepiece of the of the SWAT mask helmet thing, so the cameraman can see. <laughs> Um, oh god! They always do that, though, don't they? The, the, the film crew li- are always involved, but then when shit hits the fan, they're just sort of not paid attention to in these sort of things. It's yeah. really strange. <laughs> if I was like, if that happened, I would be going for the film crew. Like, that's who I would be arguing with. Like, you know these, uh, you know these sort of shows where like, oh, uh, uh, dressed up as your boss and all that, and like they, they like humiliate you, sort of, like Ant and Dex sort of thing. Mm, mm. If you know what I mean, it's like it's always an argument like between two people, and then when like shit hits the fan, they sort of like remove themselves from the situation and then go back to the audience and say, "Well, things are taking a turn here and all that." So, no, 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 you've just fucking did it. You provoked it. Why are you not getting shouted at? <laughs> Why are you just mm. focusing on each other? You should be getting. That's what I'd be doing. I've thought about that a y- lot. You'd go after the the film crew. Yeah, you'd be like. You would be, you'd be so raging. It's like, why would you do this to me? It's like, no, 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 mate. You're not meant to speak to me. I'm meant to go to the audience now. Speak to him. We're not, we're not here now. We're done. We've done our bit. See you later. <laughs> Maybe, the thing, is, the thing is, though, if you go after the film crew and you start yelling at them, I, I presume, say they're being paid however much, if you just say, right, just I'll pay whatever the, your rate is for until midnight tonight, just leave. Just go away. Yeah. Say they do leave, I presume they have no strong loyalty towards... Rylan and his plan to make people into murderers, <laughs> then, <laughs> then it's just Rylan at your house. You know, th- at that point, it's much easier to call the police and say, "Hi, there's someone harassing me." Yeah, and they'll come and arrest Rylan. Yeah, I've not, I've nothing against Rylan. I imagine he's lovely, but like in this hypothetical situation where he's trying to make me into a murderer. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to imagine I'd just re- remove him from my property. Yeah, <laughs> without actually murdering him. So- sometimes it's like. Like one person on their own is like harassment, but like a film crew of people like potentially humiliating a person somehow isn't. I don't. That's paparazzi, baby. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't know. How I don't that understand works either. why it's that's absurd. the thing. <laughs> you know, no. it's like, oh no, we're not, we're not, we're not harassing him. We're a film crew for uh, you've been framed. <laughs> oh right, okay, yeah. carry on. Sorry. Mm, it's like have you ever seen that picture of um, Keanu Reeves running away from a paparazzi? No. Yeah, he, um, there was a paparazzi. By the way, in in a in a slight tangent, the word paparazzi is like plural. Paparazzo is one, which is absurd. Oh. But anyway, he's running away from a from a man with a camera, and he's it's like he's 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 reached up and grabbed the camera off this bloke, and he's sprinting away down the street. And you can see that another paparazzo has taken this picture of Keanu Reeves on the street, and in the far distance, you can see like a a, a man who's not quite in focus, going, "Oh my god, he's got my camera!" And he's like running down the street, and Keanu's like <laughs> loving it and smiling and running down the street with his camera in his hand. <laughs> 
just, just really <laughs> makes me laugh every time I see it. Like, I, I really like Keanu Reeves, not just as like, an actor, but as like the, the, the personality that he gives off. Yeah, he seems, seems like, like a really good act, doesn't he? Yeah, he seems like chaotic good, you know? Yeah, it's the, um, what was the, um, that video game he was in? Was it Cyberpunk 2077? Yeah, just out of nowhere. We've got something to burn. It's like, oh, yeah, shit. out of nowhere he was in that. But then at the launch event for that, he came onto stage and everybody was like, oh my god, it's Keanu Reeves. And yeah. somebody shouted out, you're amazing. And he went, no, 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 you're amazing. Now shut up, I gotta <laughs> do this. And he looked back at the auto queue and carried on. And it really does just seem like a really, like you say, chaotic good. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful way, beautiful way to conduct yourself. Um, mm. Holy shit, we've tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about Keanu Reeves. Quick, bring it back to Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, Keanu uh, Reeves um, played John Wick, and at certain points in this film, um, Robin Williams wears a suit, and John Wick also wears a suit. There, there we go. go. We're back. Done. Done. I mean, it's a, it's a sort of like, is it corduroy suit or something like that with that weird fabric? Oh, corduroy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so... It's, but anyway... Imagine so, John Wick dressed in corduroy, murdering oh. people, and it's like, oh, no, my corduroy is co- it's covered in blood! Ah, oh, no! You're, you're not watching John Wick anymore, you're watching Joker 2019. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. I will say, Robin Williams' uh, accent, I know a lot of old Scottish women that sound exactly like that. Yeah, so it's, it's very, very good. It's very, very accurate. Just mm, see the, the fact, way. It's, yeah. See when um, he said about Natalie. He's like, look at that face. I've, I've, that is verbatim what has happened to like, every Scottish child who has like. It's gran. happened to you. Your yeah. your nan said it to you. <gasps> yeah. Look at that. Maybe Robin face. Williams is your nan. Maybe that'd be great. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, it'd be very strange and. <laughs> fucked up but uh, yeah but it'd be it'd very be... odd indeed considering i've never met robin williams in in, in as robin williams but yeah, yeah it would can, be a thing he can cook lobster so there you go so there you go <laughs> what else do you need um <laughs> but i have oh, i am vastly out of notes and i have been yeah, for the last so 25 I. minutes I, yeah i mean i could make some <laughs> bollocks up about lobsters or something if you want but aside from that i'm at notes <laughs> <laughs> no um do you have a closing statement? Uh, I do. It's a short and sweet one, this. Right. I really like this film. Well, there you go. Uh, yep. Mine's is, mine's is a bit longer. Um, oh, you uh, dick. <laughs> <laughs> Making me fucking look bad. <laughs> Shit, gonna make a murderer again, Danny. Um, <laughs> a f- a You've film... just made a murderer. We've oh, made yeah, a... that could be the catchphrase of the people We've... who are on the show. We they, they, just they're about made... to snap and kill somebody, and then, then the director has to come in and say, "Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Can you say you've just made a murderer?" He goes, "What? What? What? What do you want me to say?" So, so just say you've just made a murderer. <laughs> you've just made a murderer, and then he kills everyone. <laughs> I've got to say, right? I've got to say, I'll save it for next time. But there is a thing about Limmy, and he does an improv story that's very much like that. And it, I see. I'll explain it next time for the bullshit. But um, but anyway, uh, a film that has some important things to say about marriage with some very outdated jokes, but it hit home for me when my parents split up and basically, essentially, adults are just kids having kids. Yeah. So there you go. Indeed, thank you very much for that. Have we got... Um, now, on the back of our rants about a, a TV show where we make people murderers... Um, have we got yes. some shilling to do? We do, we do. Um, I'm Excellent. on Instagram. Hit, hit, hit me with it. Uh, uh, I'm on Instagram. Oh, Hiram. Hit me with it. I'll hit you with my fucking <laughs> fit now. <laughs> I'm making a murderer. <laughs> Um, I'm on Instagram at O'Hiram. I'm on Facebook at Daniel K. Arter. I'm on Twitter at Kerzo2000. What are you on, Lewis? I'm on Instagram at Lewis underscore Brindley. Oh, I'm on Twitter at Making underscore a Murderer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm on Twitter at Lewis Brindley 4 and my Facebook page is Lewis Brindley. Oh, God. And now I really want to make that show. Now I really oh. want to make a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be a great it, like if you could see that playing out in a sketch on that Mitchell and Webb look or something couldn't Absolutely. you Absolutely. like David Mitchell becomes a murderer and Robert Webb is like a director saying sorry mate can you just hold the knife a bit higher <laughs> do, you know I mean? do you know what I mean that's the kind of thing that you could see on a, on a, on a sketch show sorry mate before you bash your sculling can we just get the right the lighting right please 
So hang on, hang on. Just hold that emotion. Hold that emotion. Okay, and go. And yeah. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> and kill, kill, kill. Yeah. Okay, okay, folks. We're on. We're uh, we're on the we're, we're on the clock here. We've got two minutes of tape left. Uh, we've got to get this killing in. Okay, go. Oh, can, yeah. can you imagine that being on a set? That'd be so fucked. It would be like um, Satellite 5 in Doctor Who. We'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that. We will. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, we are on Podomatic, we're on Spotify, we we're on Apple Podcasts, we have a YouTube channel, we're on Deezer, we're on Google Podcasts, we're on Amazon Podcasts, we have a PayPal uh, donate button, so anything you can spare would be very much appreciated. Yes, it would be, thank you very much. Um, we are also on Patreon, and we want to thank our absolutely gorgeous, lovely people patrons, um, Chloe. I, I particularly like how, how good that sentence was, Danny. Please do continue. Yes, you're, you're, you're very welcome. Chloe, Darius, Sophie, Peter, Aditya, and Richard. Thank you so much, guys. You make yes. this show possible. Yeah, you do. Thank you very much, one and all. It means the absolute universe. We could not do this without you. And, um, yeah, thank you. You yes. you help us pay our hosting costs and all the other bizarre things we have to pay out for over the course of, of making the podcast. So thank you very much. Definitely. Um. We also have merch on uh, Teespring and Redbubble. We sell uh, T-shirts, tote bags, jumpers, uh, mugs, all sorts of things. Uh, they'll be in the show notes if you want to give them a wee, a wee look. It's up to you. It's your life. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we are partnered with a fantastic company called Number 12 Crochet Avenue. And Lewis has got a plethora of things to say that are very, very glowing and true. About this Indeed I do. Um, number 12 Crochet Avenue is a business run by my wife where she makes and sells things that she crochets. Um, she is absolutely brilliant at it. I, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I have a number of things on my desk at present that she has crocheted, which is, I mean, it's an audio format, so this is a very strange way to go about the advert. I don't know why I've picked this way, but we're going to go with it. I've got a coaster. <laughs> I've got a little pen holder thing. I've got loads of stuff. The Instagram is at number 12 Crochet Avenue. It's all letters and words. There's no none of that punctuation and them letters. No way. Fuck just, that. Just, just, just letters. That's what it is. It's letters and words. Go and check it out. Even if you aren't planning on buying anything, the Instagram is beautiful. Go and, go and take a look. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. Well, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, wasn't it? Indeed it was. Yeah. So, I don't know if you've been counting, folks, but... Um, <laughs> This is episode 49 of the podcast. What? Holy shit. We've done... Yes, it is episode 49. 49 of these fucking things. <laughs> and next and episode... both of you people listening, are, are, we're very <laughs> thankful indeed. <laughs> um, so the next episode is episode uh, 50. Indeed it is. Holy shit. I mean, <laughs> if, 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 if it wasn't for COVID, we'd have done something like amazing we'd probably like yeah. like made a murderer or something like that but um <laughs> since i would have gone around to danny's house and made him into a murderer <laughs> yeah no need i'm already there but um, <laughs> yes so instead of instead of that uh we we thought that we would do um a quiz isn't that right lewis yes it is it's going to be a competition of sorts imagine imagine highlander or some such aggressive competition. Or mad, imagine, say, Mad Max Thunderdome. Something something incredibly epic. And yeah. then dial your expectations back a lot. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to have a quiz uh, between the two of us. And gen- qu- questions that we think the other person should really know, even if they probably don't, because yeah. they're a dumbass. Exactly. And whoever wins has eternal bragging rights. And whoever loses gets ice water dumped directly onto their skull. Yeah. Which is what houses their brain. Yeah, it does. So hopefully, you know, for lucky we'll make a murderer and the brain will die and it'll just be oh one host God. from now on. <laughs> Welcome to Shout ah. Into the Void with me, Danny and Philip. Hey Danny, how you doing, man? <laughs> Silence. Just, and Philip, I'm bringing that character back. <laughs> Do you remember him? <laughs> all right, all right, Danny, how you doing, man? Hi, Philip, how you doing? I'm not too bad. Oh, this is going to work brilliantly. Yes, let's do it. Woo! I'm up for it now. Oh, Lewis, you're dead. I've... <laughs> well, we're, we're bringing Philip back for Void 50. Oh, yeah. no. No, just uh, when the when the ice water freezes your brain, 
and mm-hmm. the podcast is left to me. It will be yes. uh, Philip and I that will be doing <laughs> our <laughs> just in a Mrs. Doubtfire style situation. You'll do quick oh, changes. Yeah, we could get Patricia in from Split. We could get um, Hedwig in. Have you ever seen Split? I have seen Split. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, I see no flaws. I'm just plotting Lewis's death over here. But, um, yeah, so that should be fun. It should be. But yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a lot of fun. Laugh. Yeah. So tune in for that. And uh, Yeah, we hope to see you there. Yeah, as always, thank you for listening. Uh, we shall yes. see you, hear you, smell you, uh, dress up as a, a woman and pretend to be your housekeeper in order to get back with, uh, with our wives or partners next time. Um... Right, thanks for listening. <laughs> See you later, Dean.